Mike Golick, number 90, is expected to be the starter in that position. I, I was in the locker room the other day, and Jerome Brown has a rotator cuff problem. They call heads. Heads it is. You want to toss. Turn around, please. Washington won a toss and liked it to receive. Good luck. Well, unlike what we've experienced much of this fall, uh, Dick, <laughs> nobody deferred out there on the coin flip. Uh, Mark Rippon and the Washington Redskins will have the ball to start this game. In case you just joined us, win is not going to be a factor here in the early stages of this game. They'll play it on artificial turf. And there is Joe Gibbs, the head coach of the Washington Redskins. In the playoffs, he is 11 and 3. And three seasons ago, he went all the way to the Super Bowl in San Diego, where the Redskins buried the Denver Broncos. On the other side, the controversial one, Buddy Ryan, looking for his first victory as a head coach. He was beaten here in an upset by the Los Angeles Rams a year ago and then two seasons ago it has widely been rumored that they lost to the Chicago Bears I say rumored because most of us didn't see the game played in that fog in Soldier Field back deep now for the Redskins Howard and Mitchell Mitchell's last appearance against the Eagles was as a quarterback after their two regulars were knocked out, and Roger Ruzak to kick it off and get things underway. There's the young man Mitchell, number 30. in Spokane Washington played at Washington State and he will lead out the familiar one back attack of the Washington Redskins but what a one back this year Ernest Viner who has rushed for better than a thousand yards then the wide receivers Mock Sanders and Clark Don Warren one of four tight ends that you can see today from Joe Gibbs they use the H back the power First down from the I formation, they run right at Mike Pitts, number 74. He brings Biner down. Now the offensive line, and this may surprise you, but this is the fourth lightest offensive line in the National Football League. So forget about the Hogs with this group. They're not as bulky as they once were. Second down, Finer again, short of the first down. Jesse Small, number 52, making the stop, and we'll take a look at this rugged Eagle defense. Reggie White, Mike Pitts, Mike Golick starting, Clyde Simmons, underrated, number 96, and so too is Seth Joyner, number 59. Byron Evans and Jesse Small. The Waters and Hopkins, the two hitters of the safety. Smith is the rookie. He'll be picked on before the day is over. Two yards to go for a first down for the Redskins. And Rippon's first pass for a first down. He goes to number 83, Ricky Sanders. Jeff Fisher, the defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, said it's very important for the Eagles to come out and hold their early series to the minimum. Keep, their, keep it down because he wants to be able to evaluate what the Redskins game plan is in the first couple of series then make their adjustments because the Redskins are great for packaging their game plans by various formations. Biner now the lone back Middleton is the H back he'll bring the power from behind Rippon they'll run in behind him and Biner cracks out to the 36 yard line before Joyner with help can bring him down. You'll note they have, they'll use a lot of movement. The Redskins like to disguise, they like to disguise what they're doing, but you don't have to disguise much when you have 66 Jacoby turning out a big 
White, number 92 there, running up inside him. Now they expect the linebacker to fill that hole inside Reggie. They keep Reggie, number 92, outside to, to contain anything going outside. The Redskins doing what everyone expected. Lining up and coming at him with the running game. Second and five. Middleton cuts back now. And again, it's Miner. He'll be short of the first down, making his way to the 40-yard line as the Redskin offense trying to dominate the clock here in the early going and get a feel of what it's like against this Eagle defense without Jerome Brown in the starting lineup. Well, Joe Gibbs said that they don't plan to really use many tight third down situation formations. They plan to stay spread out and try to keep the defense spread because the defense is so physical. Clark, the wide receiver to the left. Monk comes down to the right. Sanders is in the slot. Warren moves over to the right wing. Now it's Sanders doubling back, and on third and short, ripping to throw for the first down to Sanders across midfield and to the 41-yard line. You can see he came in motion, Sanders did. He came in motion right here, moved in there, came back, and then worked underneath. Here he comes. Now watch him come back outside. Little see, he's just thinking first down. He shakes and breaks. He gets the ball. He hits the seam. Now he becomes a running back, and this guy can really move. When you talk to their players, they think he'll make the big play today. The Redskins storm into Eagle territory, but on first down, not much going, as again, number 74, Mike Pitts, along with 52, Jesse Small. Look for, Biner down. look for the defensive coordinator, Jeff Fisher, to come with some kind of red dog, including linebackers up inside, to stop the running game. Throw them for the loss, or at least keep them right at the point of attack. Zero yards. Cut it off. The young defensive coordinator out of USC, played with the Chicago Bears. New buddy Ryan is an assistant coach. The youngest defensive coordinator in the NFL. Second and long. Off a delay action, Biner. This is going to leave the Redskins in third and long at the 40-yard line, and Reggie White, 92, was there. Well, the Redskins are a very good third and long football team. They're the second best in the NFL, so you can expect them, and you can expect Eagles to really give them respect. Eagles like to pressure these situations. Warren and Sanders are on the right side. Clark is up to the left. Monk comes in motion, ripping his back. Under pressure, incomplete. That was Wes Hopkins, number 48. Free safety, linebacker type personality coming up inside. He got the pressure on him. You'll see the inside rush, 48, top of your screen coming in there. No one picks him up. See, everybody is occupied. More people rushing than people to protect with. Overloaded rush situation. Rod Harris awaiting the punt. Kelly Goodburn. And a fair catch is made at the 13-yard line. So when you come back, It'll be Randall Cunningham and the Philadelphia Eagles with their first possession of the afternoon. Now acclaimed as the most dangerous all-around offensive player in the game. Randall Cunningham and behind him an improving running game. Keith Sherman has been able to give them a dimension, especially on artificial turf. Keith Byers is listed as a running back, but really no one has invented a proper name for his position. They move him all over from tight end at the wing back. Buddy Ryan likes to get Byers involved in the offense. It is Sherman directly behind Cunningham. They cost to Sherman. Run out of bounds on the far side by Andre Collins, the rookie from Penn State. Let's take a look now at this defensive unit for the Washington Redskins. And the offensive line, I should say, first. We have Heller Shad, David Alexander, the center, Ron Salt, and Reggie Singletary. 
on the right side of that line. David Alexander is the player to watch in the offensive line. If he can hold up with that injured knee, then Tamborello is on the field as the center. So Alexander did not open up at center. He wanted to, but they had to go to Tamborello right away. Complete to the 22-yard line to Sherman coming out of the backfield with their first pass. Now defensively for the Redskins, there's the line. Charles Mann, Daryl Grant, Tim Johnson moves in at right tackle, and Marcus Cook is the right end. The linebackers, Collins, has already been in on a stop. Govia, Wilbur Marshall, number 58, in Super Bowl experience with the Bears. Mayhew, Daryl Green, Alvin Walton, and Todd Bowles. Green has been locked up on Barnett from the beginning of this game. He's going to take the rookie wide receiver one on one from the shotgun Cunningham looking for him he was covered goes the other way and it is complete to his tight end Jackson breaks free 15 Keith Jackson out of bounds at the 12 yard line Martin Mayhew getting him out of bounds a 65 yard gain. Monty Coleman, number 51, was locked on to Keith Jackson, 88. The one thing Randall did here was sit in the pocket. He didn't flush early. You can see the ball was thrown high into the outside. Safety comes over to make the play. He's a big guy. You really have to get your pads into him. They don't do that. Long gainer moved the chains. Look at Randall, he's excited. He told me yesterday, Coach, I'm gonna try to stay in the pocket and give my receivers more time to get downfield before I flush. The Eagles have called a timeout. They came to the line and did not like what they saw defensively. So Cunningham will come over to the sideline to confer with the coaching staff. Well, Buddy Ryan's quarterback took the timeout rather than a five-yard penalty because the clock was about to run out, and the Eagles were not going to get the snap in time. So instead of the penalty, Cunningham used the timeout. Quarterbacks frequently will use timeouts earlier in the first half. They really like to save them in the second half of a game if they can. In striking position after the 66-yard pass to Keith Jackson. Cunningham hands off to Sherman, who... Battered at the 10 yard line, Greg Manuski, one of the two middle linebackers for the Redskins, number 91, in there defensively. The Eagles inside the 20 yard line have been very efficient. They've been in there 54 times, scored 46 times, eight hits, 85%. The best thing about it, though, is 31 of them have been touchdowns, 15 field goals. Jackson goes to Cunningham's left. Fires a threat out of the backfield, stays to block. They'll throw incomplete for Thomas Sanders, a running back who had slipped out. Good pressure on him, had a throw going back. Timmy Johnson, number 78, Darrell Grant in there. Kenny Jackson off the Eagles' sideline with the play. The Eagles like the slant patterns down here inside tight. Wide receivers out wide, try to shake the corner of the outside and come down underneath. Williams out to the right. Barnett is slotted for him. From the shotgun, Cunningham slips and he's down at the 20 yard line and the Eagles will have to settle for a field goal attempt. He went back to set, he planted that right foot, it went right out from underneath him. Nothing he can do. I've seen that happen many times on this AstroTurf. But he doesn't like that one. Here's it from a reverse angle. You can see he'll take the shotgun snap, he plants back. Now watch his right foot. See, it went right out from under him. He had no prayer. The linebacker who was spying on him at that time was Coleman, number 51. He was coming after him. Ruzak's field goal is good, and the Eagles score first. So a pass to Keith Jackson sets up the field goal, and it's 3-0 Philadelphia. 
37 yard field goal by Ruzek makes it three nothing following that 66 yard reception by Keith Jackson. I'll tell you the one thing we aren't going to see probably much more in this ball game is Coleman number 51 locked up man to man on Jackson number 88 without a safety over there backing him up. High but very short. Howard comes up and makes his way to the 28 yard line where the Redskins will have a first and 10. Ken Rose making the stop for the kicking team. Look for the Redskins to vary their formation packages here early in the ball game. They they're playing cat and mouse with the Eagle defense. They see what the Eagle defense does does versus certain formations certain substitutions and then they go ahead and start running their offense. Jerome Brown is playing for the first time today. Number 99 is in at defensive tackle. Middleton goes in motion. Now Warren goes over to that side. They'll run Biner behind the left side of the offensive line where Reggie White makes the stop. Brad, every time in my coaching experience that I played a player that had been hurt, and he thought he was he thought he was okay, and he went ahead and played. When the game was all over, we found out he wasn't okay, and we shouldn't have played him. Players want to play in these games. There he is, number 99, being worked on there by Raleigh McKenzie, 63. More often than not, when the game's over, the guy does not play as well. It did not take the Redskins long to test it. He has a rotator, a rotator, rotator cuff problem. Swing outside. Simmons had a shot at him and he battles his way back to the 30. It's going to be third and long again. You're going to see here that they got penetration in the running lanes as they pulled those guards. Knocked him down. He didn't have any help. Didn't have any help there. See, there he is. Knocks the guards, tackles down. Boom. He's got him back in the backfield. Keeps him going to the sideline. No place to go. Good defense. Jerome Brown pulled himself out of the game, and Mike Golick is back in at defensive tackle. The rotator cuff was bothering him. Rippin under fire also slips. Still gets it off, but it is incomplete, and the Redskins are forced to punt. And both quarterbacks now have had problems with their footing in the early going and Biner is hurt. Biner is getting help leaving the field from one of his teammates limping off. Another guy coming off. Both quarterbacks now going back to plant plant that back foot slide out from under him. That was Seth Joyner who was limping off. Good burn. Nails a punt. Harris driven back to the 22 yard line. The 25. Good return by Harris. to the 37 yard line. That's a 14 yard return on a 48 yard punt. Philadelphia leading by a field goal. We'll come right back to the bet. Joyner being tended to on the other sideline. Meanwhile, how about Biner's injury? Here's Biner right here, number 21. He limped off. He limped off the field. You'll see he gets trapped. One of his own offensive linemen, I think, fall on the back of his left leg. Keeps it going at right there, and he gets up limping from there. Ball at the Eagles 36-yard line. First and ten. Sherman breaks free at midfield. 45 spins to the 41 yard line a splendid 23 yard run by Heath Sherman who came out behind his offensive line and that's the unit that is being questioned they're going without a huddle this package was put in down in Tampa earlier in the week this will prevent Joe Gibbs and the Redskins defensive assistant from making situational substitutions. Cunningham and the Eagles from the 41 on first down. It is Sherman again, this time to the 39. Sherman's long run, that last run that he made was just a very simple lead play, fullback through the point of attack. He hits the hole quickly. Defense not ready to respond. Still without the huddle. Still without the huddle. 
The Redskins are a situation down a distance substitution team. This controls that. Using the shotgun on second and long, Cunningham over the middle and incomplete at the 20 yard line. He wanted Fred Barnett, the rookie from Arkansas State, and Alvin Walton, number 40, was there defensively for the Skins. Randall Cunningham throws these seam passes beautifully. He has a much better touch than given credit for, but very good coverage right there. You can see the little guy, Daryl Green, leaping up in there, but he gets the help from the safety to finish it off. If the safety doesn't get there, maybe it's a reception. Barnett against Green, one of the great duels within the battle here this afternoon. They've been locked up all game long, and that time, Green got help from his safety. Now third and long. Jackson stepping in motion. Cunningham looks in his direction, drops for Myers, but he let him too much. And the Eagles will have to punt it away. On third down, you can look for him to try to get the ball to that guy, Byers. 81 receptions this year. They call him a running back. He really isn't a running back. He's more of an H-back. When he gets banged up, the coaches say they have to send three players, three different players in the game to fill the roles that he fills throughout the game plan. Jeff Fiegels will punt it. Howard back deep. Standing at the 10, and word from the bench is a sprained ankle suffered by Biner. Gerald Riggs returned to action, so we would expect to see him Good get punt. some carries before long. Good punt. Nice job. Well, coming up, the road to the Super Bowl continues on ABC as the Kansas City Chiefs head into Miami to take on Dan Marino and the Dolphins. That coverage of that game begins right after this one here on this Saturday afternoon on ABC. Biner over on the sideline with that sprained ankle. He's been a very, very durable player this year. Really come on strong, as we've said, in the second half of the season. What he's really been good is he's really been a fine playoff runner. 6.5 average in the playoffs. Now Riggs number 37. He's the lone running back in behind Rippon. First down, throws complete for short yardage. Throws out there in front of Eric Allen, just a little hitch. What they, they like that hitch rather than the out, little short out, because you catch the short out, you head to the sideline, you're out of bounds. The hitch, it gives these little quick receivers the opportunity to shake a guy, break it, move up inside, but Eric Allen wouldn't allow it. And Gary Clark into this game. He's a man that almost everybody on both sides of the ball says that if the Redskins are to come up with a big play, a big passing play, it would be number 84, Gary Clark. Now Rippon, under pressure, going deep. Clark tries to break out and complete at midfield. Ben Smith, the rookie, being tested. You know what they did? They lined up three people all in the same area of the field, crossed two of them, cross to him and then send they send Clark deep look at that he darn near had that I don't think the defender touched the football or defended it it was just slightly overthrown and Rippon the best thing he does is throw the ball deep third and seven Clark comes out to the right with the rest of the posse Monk goes in motion behind Rippon Rippon straight back with time over the middle for the first going to block Reggie White by themselves. The tackle had him for a while. He got him back there. And then all of a sudden, here comes someone to help him. They're not going to block Reggie White with one person very often. So Gary Clark has now been the target for three consecutive passes. And he gives the Redskins a first and 10 on their own 24-yard line. Warren in motion. Gerald Riggs, the ball carrier. Breaks out for a couple of yards. Well, Gerald Riggs has had some big seasons, three times over a 1,000. He ran real well last week against Buffalo. He's been injured. He's had an arch foot problem. He had that problem last year, Brent, that reoccurred this year. But what this guy is on, and he's healthy, he's a horse. Now it's the Redskins coming up with the no-huddle look. You can do what I can do. Play action for Riggs. 
to the 29-yard line. You won't see the true Eagle 46 defense very much today with Reggie White on the nose because the Redskins have done a real good job of audibling and running their counter gap play opposite the strength, and it's hurt them. So Jeff Fisher said they're running a variation of that, but not the true 46. Izell Jenkins comes in as an additional cover man for the Eagle defense. Third down and five now for the Skins. Straight back, incomplete. He slipped and again. A penalty flag thrown on the far side. Rippon, as he set up that time, he slipped again. These guys are going to have to evaluate at halftime and, and think about trying a different pair of shoes because he's slipping again. Number 79, offense was lined up too far off the line of scrimmage. Only refuse fourth down. You know, they get in that two point stance, you know, and that moves them back a little bit. Then they get back a little bit pretty quick. They're not on the line of scrimmage anymore. You know, that spot where Kelly Goodburn is, right in there, is where everybody has been slipping. Perhaps that spot is a little more damp than the rest of the field. This is Harris, the return man, out to the 36 yard line with the Eagles, who lead it three to nothing. We'll have a first and ten after the nine yard return. We'll take a look and we'll show you what I was talking about in regard to Rippon dropping back. Here is number 11. Now watch him set that back foot. See how that slipped out? Boy, when you're a quarterback and you rely on stopping on that back foot to reset and gain your balance and get the power off that back foot, when that happens, that really, really shakes you. Hard to throw it accurately. Ma imagine a pitcher coming off the mound with his right foot slipping out underneath him. Can't throw it accurately. Myers comes out to the left wing for Cunningham. Sherman, his running back. That's Myers behind him. Cunningham on first down, under pressure, steps away from it as he so nimbly does, and fires complete to the 40 yard line. That again, number 88, Keith Jackson, in case you just joined us. It was a 66-yard reception, Cunningham to Jackson, that set up the Eagles' field goal, the only score in the game. What the Redskins do is a real good job of jamming people as they come off the line of scrimmage. They didn't want to go to the right. Now, watch them jam right here. Instead of letting him come off clean, they do a good job there, then turn him loose, make it a legal contact. Now he's scrambling out, gets a little check down. Not a design play. Second and six. And we'll take a break with more coverage of the NFC wildcard playoffs featuring the Skins and the Eagles after this message and a word from our ABC station. Ernest Beiner having that sprained left ankle taped. Word from the benches is expected to return. Meanwhile, it'll be second down and six for Philadelphia as we start the second quarter with the Eagles leading the Washington Redskins by a Ruzak 37 yard field goal. Fires the motion man. Sherman out to the 43 yard line. And ABC's coverage of this NFC wildcard game featuring the Redskins and the Eagles is being brought to you by. Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. And the Eagles are trying to build some excitement with a no huddle, huddle offense here in this playoff game. But the Redskins got organized already and they made the substitutions. That the right defense is in there. On third down, Cunningham throws incomplete. One of Jackson, and he was short of his target. Real good reorganization by the Redskins staff. They got set up. Boom, those guys came in. They had their nickel defense in on that third down, just what they wanted. As a result, the Eagles will punt it away again. Daryl Green goes back deep. What I say, huh? I asked Daryl last night. I said, you haven't been returning a punch. You've only done one all year, but I'll bet you're back there tomorrow. And he said, I wouldn't be surprised. One of the greatest punt returns any of us ever saw in a playoff game against the Chicago Bears one day at Soldier Field. Eagles. Now Daryl Green. Bear catches this one. <laughs> 
getting too excited about it out there. <laughs> it's early. He's just That's getting it. a feel for it. We'll be right back. The Washington Redskins with a first and ten on their own 21 yard line trailing by a field goal. The Redskins run or run the ball well enough to force the Eagles to commit linebackers to stop the run to get better one on one passing situations on the same downs. You know what I'm talking about on the running downs force them to, to bring the linebackers to stop us. Then we get them bringing the linebackers. Then we go after that tight man to man coverage throwing the ball. That's your thought. Jerome Brown has returned to the defensive line. Riggs the ball carrier and he was hit by number 48 Wes Hopkins the safety man bringing him down. You'll take a look at Jerome Brown and now he's there he is right middle of your screen. That's Riley McKenzie just knocking him off the ball there pretty good. Look at he's favoring his right shoulder there right now. He should tell the coach I'm not 100 percent. I don't care how tough you are and how much guts you have. You usually don't play as well. Now Mike Pitts is out of that defensive line and Golick is alongside Brown. So the battle down in the trenches continues with the Redskins trying to run right Ooh. straight ahead and a great Rumble. play by Seth Joyner. The Eagles have got it. They ran a defensive line. They ran a defensive line stunt. Okay, meaning two linemen cross charge. Actually, that ball wasn't knocked out. It just came out. I can't believe Gerald Riggs, as experienced as he is, would allow that body when he's in the air, to allow that right elbow to get out away from the body. No excuse for that. He's got to keep it locked in tight. Joyner was coming from behind. Wes Hopkins recovered the fumble. So Hopkins recovers. Gives Cunningham on the Eagles excellent scoring position here. They'll start for the 26. Cunningham hits Jackson for the 10 yard line for a first down for Philadelphia. Alvin Walton there defensively, 16 more yards. Up there, bump and run. He's going to shake him right now. He's going to give him a little shake there. See, now watch him go back underneath it. See, here he goes. Now he looks for the ball to the inside. He's got a strong safety covering a big tight end that can run like a wide receiver. As Rich Kotite says, this guy could go down in the future as being one of the finest to ever play in the position. The Eagles failed to get a touchdown their last time down here. They settled for a field goal. Sherman steps to the six yard line. You can look for him in power running situations to run up behind Reggie Singletary at 285 pounds. They like to run to the right side. They feel he's the most aggressive run blocker within that group. One thing that the offensive coaches of the Eagles were going to watch was the pursuit from the backside against Cunningham. If it comes hard, they'll go to the bootleg down here inside the 10. The other thing you have to be alert for here when they spread him out is Randall likes to run the quarterback draw down here. Sherman's in behind Cunningham. He'll run Sherman. Not much daylight there. They get to the five yard line, and it'll be third down for Philadelphia. Sherman has really added a dimension as he's come on. He had three 100 yard games in a row. He's added a dimension of not having to have the play block perfectly. He finds the daylight. The Eagles have done a good job when they take the with the offense when the defense has taken it away they've scored 18 out of 30 times 10 of more touchdowns eight field goals that's 60 percent of the time they've turned that turnover into a score Cunningham straight back firing to the left and it'll be incomplete it'll be now fourth down and four for the first down five for the touchdown they're giving Randall an awful lot of time back there they got a five-man rush you you can see why he's not finding a lane to rush through. The defensive maintaining real good discipline. Real good discipline. Gets that high into the outside. There's Andre Collins trying to cover. They call defensive holding there, Brent. I didn't see a flag go down on the field. It was right in the middle of the end zone. First down on the three. And this will give the Eagles a first and goal as the result of that holding away from the pass. So it was holding right in the middle 
The umpire dropped the flag. Now it's first and goal. He and slipped. He slipped again. <laughs> Keith Sherman making a cut inside the five. He must have Vaseline on this surface. The this holding call was against Martin Mayhew, the cornerback on the left side. He was guilty of the hold, giving the Eagles the first and goal. You know, normally they don't call something totally away from the direction of the throw. And there, the, Martin Mayhew was on the other side of the field. Second down and goal. Cunningham throwing out of the back of the end zone, and it will be third and goal as the Eagles continue to have trouble trying to score inside the 20. The target that time was Mickey Schuler. Rich Kotai came with a play action pass. The offensive coordinator, good call, good discipline by the Redskins. Linebacker coverage was excellent on the backs out of the backfield. Rich Kotai right there in the middle of your screen. He says, we are not going <laughs> to play this passively. We're going to attack their best. We're going to throw the ball at Daryl Green. We don't care. We're going after him. Anthony Tony is the other running back. And they're alongside Sherman off the fake. Cunningham trying to get away from man. And he's whistled down at the 10-yard line. You could hear the whistle. And the ball is down at the 10-yard line. As big number 71, Charles Mann, who has made so many fine defensive plays for the Washington Redskins throughout his great career makes another one. You can you can see the pressure right here. Nobody picked him up. Normally a guard or a center would pick him up. The center's going out backside. Ben Tremperillo saw him late, but it was too late. The Eagles will settle for another field goal opportunity here apparently on fourth down. Eagles is the holder for Ruzak. Ruzak adds his second field goal. This one a 28-yarder. So following the fumble by Riggs, the Eagles make it six to nothing. American football goes global. The World League premieres March 24th. Here's the holding call. Calvin Williams right here had come in motion. There's Mayhew. He goes down, tries to beat him underneath. Mayhew hooks him with his left arm right there. The official back of the end zone sees it, throws the flag. So Ruzak for the 37, and now a 28-yard field goal has made it a 6-0 game. The Redskins are obviously feeling very good about the fact that the Eagles have threatened twice, and they have held them to field goals. Ruzak kicking it off. Good kick. Hobbs, one of the deep men. This is Howard. Ooh, good tackle. Brett Hager, and there's the kid that won the MVP Special Teams Award. Ken Rose, number 55. Brett Hager, number 54. Good job of covering kicks. That was a good kick to cover because it was in the air. It hung up there. That allows the coverage to get underneath it. Ernest Biner returns to the backfield for the Washington Redskins. Number 21, sprained an ankle earlier. His substitute, Riggs, fumbled. Now Biner is back. Griffin on first down, goes deep. And Clark is covered, intercepted by Eric Allen at the 40. Down at the 45-yard line. The second turnover by the Redskins. Bump and run, tight coverage. Eric Allen turns and run. He comes down the outside now. The ball is underthrown. Receiver keeps going. Eric Allen slows down, goes up and gets it to the highest point. Now he becomes the running back. Eric Allen intercepting his fourth ball on the year. Philadelphia's ball. It was the Redskins' last two plays. A fumble by Riggs and now an interception by Rippon. You see Turning Mark the ball back. You know, Mark Griffin is not an interception thrower. He has thrown more recently. <laughs> you throw one more of those, and it's almost automatic loss. 
First and ten for the Eagles. Ball on their own 46 yard line. Fires in motion behind Cunningham. Hands to Sherman who bounces back to the outside and then is brought down by Manuski. Yeah, they're slipping around out there. Uh, Charles Mann, number 71, got good penetration up there and made it bounce to the outside. They didn't want to run out there. Charlie, you'll take a look at Charles Mann, number 71, as he creates havoc. There he is, right side of your screen. He gets up. There was a down block by Jackson. He didn't get him cut off. So he got good penetration. They couldn't get inside. Charles Mann has that real good quickness, and he wants to take advantage of Reggie Singletary's over-aggressiveness if, if, if he can. Second down and long. Jackson behind Cunningham now turns back. Of a play fake under pressure and brought down a great defensive play by Tim Johnson, number 78. See what happened there. One of the running backs hurt the guard in technique to make the block. You'll see right here, the offensive guard right here. The offensive guard right here and the tackle right here. You'll note as he passed this. Now watch the running back in the back seat. He knocks the guard off his block, allows that penetration. <laughs> They'll be talking about that in the huddle. Get out of my way, kiddo. Third down and 18 for the Eagles. Cunningham down the near side incomplete. He expected Calvin Williams to break back toward the sideline. A little bit of miscommunication. Jeff Beagles to punt it away. So a storyline right now would read that the Eagles are not taking advantage of the opportunities being offered to them by the Redskins. Green fields it at the 22 yard line and cuts back. Now 25 and down at the 31 yard line and out of bounds. Well, tomorrow at 1 Eastern time on ABC, the World Swimming and Diving Championships coming to you from Perth, Australia. Then at 3 Eastern, it'll be the PGA's and the Senior Tour's finest, the Infinity Tournament of Champions, all tomorrow on ABC. And here's how they stood coming into the round. Lanny Watkins after two rounds at 12 under. Tom Kite, three shots back. Ernest Miner continuing at running back. The ball carrier to the 32 yard line and Byron Evans bringing him down. That's that cutback wing back trap. It's a design cutback. Start right and then come on back and they're using the H back to come across and try to block the defensive end or the first man that shows. They ran it real well against Buffalo last week. Settled into a defensive battle. No personal fouls. No cheap shot stuff. Ripping back over the middle and great defensive play Seth by Joyner. Joyner again. He has made two plays. He has caused a fumble and now he breaks up a pass. A man who has been denied an opportunity to go to the Pro Bowl and probably deserved it. One of the more unheralded linebackers in the game. I know that Buddy Ryan really respects this guy because he stays on the field all the time. You'll see this low angle now. He's throwing a delay pattern back up underneath. He stayed with him man to man. He tried to beat him underneath. He couldn't do it. This guy stays in every snap. Every snap. Griffin straight back. Good protection over the middle. He's got Monk to the 45. And down at the 39-yard line with the rookie Ben Smith bringing him down. Great pass protection by the offensive line. When you, when you give him that kind of time, when you give him this kind of time, you're asking for trouble. You'll see he sit up there, nobody in his face. Beautiful throwing lane, no hands in his face. Comeback pattern right there. Now poor tackling right there in the backfield by Isel Jenkins, number 46. Get him down. you got to get your pads into him to make those tackles. Good execution by the Redskins. Here's a guy that knows what he's doing in terms of catching footballs. Look at 730 of them. 28 playoff yards on that last reception. And Rippon rolling to the right has time. Now he's hit as he releases, but he comes to Finer on the near side, and Finer is to the 15-yard line, and that was Reggie White. 
That's who took the pads to him on the throw, but it was a good pass. That's a little bit about what we've been, we've been looking for the, uh, the Eagles to do this. Action away. See, now he comes out on a bootleg. He wanted to get the ball to Warren. Hopkins picked it up over on the left side. He throws all the way back to the back. He faked to all the way back across the field. Here comes Biner <laughs> moving it upfield. Those plays many times result in big plays. Easy to make a mistake on defense. 23-yard completion. First and 10 for the Redskins. Ball inside the Eagles 20. Again on first down, Rippon will throw. Great time to the end zone. Touchdown. It was Art Monk. 16 yards. Here's Art Monk. He was lined up inside tight. There he is, Art Eric Allen, taking him back to the inside. There was play action that eliminated the linebacker. You see Hopkins tries to, tries to take him on. That's not even legal down there. They should have called pass interference down there. Defensive holding. Then he goes up and gets it. Sometimes when you cheat, it doesn't help. Now one of the more reliable kickers, Chip Miller, puts Washington ahead for the first time this afternoon. The Eagles could not take advantage of some opportunities, and the Redskins have bounced back. Well, the Redskins in a hurry. 68 yards in five plays. Mark Rippon with three big completions. The 16-yarder for the score to Art Monk. Tell you, whenever you have a chance to get the ball in the hands of Art Monk, you take it. When you've caught 730, now 731, you might as well go to the guy that's been there before. Low Miller takes it out of the back of the end zone, and it'll come up on the 20-yard line. Here's Art Monk right here. He's in lined up tight, and he hits the seam down there with a tight end crossing pattern off the play action fake in here. See, that froze the linebackers. There's the guard pulling. There's the fakes to the back. Now he gets the seam right. That was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Hopkins, the free safety, tried to hit him as he went by. Didn't make it. Play action is a pain in the neck for linebackers that are really aggressive. And you take Evans and those kind of guys, they like to hit you, and they're known for their hitting ability. Drives you crazy. Now the rookie wide receivers will try to get into the game from Philadelphia. Williams and Barnett, their first playoff game. Cunningham hands to Sherman on first down. He's to the 23-yard line. Minuski, Greg Minuski, number 91, middle linebacker out of Colgate. Again in there defensively for the Redskins. Now he will go off on the far side and they'll make a substitution. Kurt Govia out of BYU moves in at middle linebacker. Expecting a pass a little bit better on coverage. So he has replaced Minuski. On second down, Green locked up with Barnett. Cunningham to drop it off underneath the coverage to Sherman, the running back, who picks up the first down. One back and the, you fake to him, he comes on out like that. It's tough. And many times in these two tight ends, two wide out formations, they are audibling the direction they're going with their plays, either run or pass, based on the secondary alignment, going away from the strength of the secondary. The importance of getting Williams and Barnett, the rookies, into the offense. That's the only way they can score points. Early in the year, they were inexperienced. They weren't getting the ball. They started getting the ball. Then now all of a sudden, they've got more touchdowns than, than any rookie pair. Philadelphia behind for the first time. Sherman, the ball carrier, into the heart of the defense. Manuski, who's back on first down, and now after making the stop, he will leave, and Kurt Govia will come back into the game along with Monty Coleman, number 51. The Eagles with have already dropped, Brent, the, the no huddle scheme. You know, if you're going to use a new huddle and you think no huddle and you think it's good, stay with it for a while. Coleman frequently in a passing situation will be the spy in charge of monitoring what Randall Cunningham does. Second and long. Cunningham under pressure steps up away from it now to the 40, 45 midfield look out. And down at the 41 yard line. What he does better than most. With a penalty flag now being thrown back at the 40 yard line and it's going to go against Washington. I think Daryl Grant got in an argument with somebody he felt was holding him. 
took a little shot at him. <laughs> the official saw it, 15 yards. Boy, I'll tell you, one of the important things to do in a playoff game. Personal foul, 77 defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Is to control your intensity and direct it to help you play better. That's a stupid move. Here's Randall right here. This is what he does so well. Good block right there. He's forced up inside. Man, almost gets him. They haven't decided. They've defined where he has to go, and he does it. No one in the hole there. No one's spying on him in that situation. And, boy, nobody does it any better than this guy does it. So quick when he bolted free. His first run of the game, 25 yards, tack on 15. Eagles now with another scoring opportunity. They're third in the first half. Byers cuts back now. Going out as a wide receiver, he moved downfield too fast. Penalty flags fly all over the place. Cunningham's going to go out of bounds on the far side, but it was Byers holding. who turned to go upfield, and there's also a holding call in the middle. The Redskins right away came back with a five-man rush, filling up those scramble lanes, those flush lanes that the quarterback has. So there are a couple of penalties on this play. They'll take the holding. We have multiple fouls against the offense. 41, illegal motion, penalty refused, offensive holding will be accepted. Number 69, 10 yards, replay, first down. Veteran referee Gene Barth explaining it to the crowd, you at home. Number 69, that's Bruce Colley. He's been in some big ones. Hey, he was a starter in the Super Bowl a year ago for the 49ers. I wonder if Salt, Ron Salt, number 66, is having some physical problem. He hasn't been 100% healthy for a long time. So the ball has moved back to the Redskin 35-yard line. To get a first down, the Eagles have to get to the 15. First down and 20. Sherman, oh! Redskin, Walton got it in the air. Washington ball. The Eagles' first turnover of the game. And Daryl Grant was the man who got a paw on him and knocked it free. Daryl Grant just righted himself for the 15-yard personal foul. You'll see this from the reverse angle high. Direct handoff. Direct handoff. Now it's coming toward us to the bottom of the screen. Byers going to kick out. He's leading now. Here he is. He's got it tucked away nicely right there. And Grant just strips it. There's the ball in the air. God, might you want to feel like you want to jump and get it, doesn't it, Brent? <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Fellas like that break in half, wouldn't they? Mm. Well, Daryl Grant's their most experienced guy. He's really their defensive leader. He's a contract holdout, got in late, but he's been playing very well. Now it's first and ten for Washington. They lead it by an extra point. Middleton in motion, leads Biner, and Biner cracks his way to the 36, running hard, where Reggie White gets the tackle. The Redskins constantly change the look of the formation they show you initially. They show you a look. And then prior to the snap, they're either going to shift or they're going to go in motion. And they like to, to change the formation strength from right to left or, or use movement to do that because it makes the defense really adjust. Sanders coming around from his end. Trying to get the first down, and he could not. Excellent tackle down there by number 48, Wes Hopkins. Hopkins again turned in an outstanding game defensively as we hit the two-minute warning here in the first half. Washington 7, Philadelphia 6. <laughs> 290 pound Jim Lachey, number 79, going to the Pro Bowl for the Washington Redskins, representing the NFC. Already has been there for the AFC, and we know he's doing an outstanding job because in most one-on-one -on -one blocking situations, he's matched against Clyde Simmons, number 96. Number 96 has not gotten a call here so far today. 96, of course, buried the Dallas Cowboys playoff chances when he knocked off Troy Aikman. This is an Eagle defense that has knocked out six quarterbacks in the last eight weeks. But the Washington offensive line hand fighting and Ripman trying to hit the hot receiver as they take Ripman down for one of the first times here today. They came with force. That was Wes Hopkins right there. Nobody picked him up. He wanted to go to a hot receiver, meaning a receiver that reads that and then adjusts his pattern accordingly. And, and Ripman, he's upset. Wes Hopkins, he's not upset. He liked it. 
Just, he look, just look inside, he's saying. Just look inside, now hit with the football. Look at him. In talking to Rippon, what impresses you most is his size. Yeah, he's 6'4", 240. And the punt under pressure. Harris, Fair catches it at the 17-yard line. 44-yard punt for Goodburn. He's the second punter employed this year by Coach Joe Gibbs. And now it'll be Randall Cunningham. Any word from the Eagle bench on their offensive line? No, they say Salt is not injured. He's all right. This playing Collie. Let's see who's in there right now. You know, Salt had two knee operations, missed a year and everything. You know, he gave up a number one pick for him. Collie is in there right now. They like Collie because he pulls well. So let's see if they're going to use him in some kind of a, a play there. He's out leading a, a running back. They go to an extra wide receiver. Kenny Jackson, number 83, comes into the game. A shotgun formation for the Eagles on first and 10, working against the two-minute clock here in the first half, and down by an extra point. Cunningham, still waiting for someone to break free, goes long and intercepted at midfield. He underthrew his wide receiver, and Daryl Green made the interception. I'll tell you why he underthrew. Daryl Grant really gave it to Randall. They gave him too much time initially, and as Randall told us yesterday, I'm not going to scramble. I'm going to try to get the ball downfield. Shotgun formation. Daryl Grant coming over the left guard. Shad, number 79. You'll see him right on the hash mark. He's holding the ball, holding his ball. Now watch. Here, here he comes. Now watch his shot. Wham. He really gave it to him, and that's 280 pounds. Good interception by Daryl Green. Here's the hit. Now take a look. At Can you picture being hit by 290 pounds like that? First and 10 for the Skins after the turnover. The ball at midfield. A minute 39 to work with here in the first half. Trying to set short pass. The binder who breaks free to the 40 and out of bounds. Stopping the clock at the 35 yard line. Andre Waters getting him out of bounds after a 15-yard gain. Just one point I want to make about the interception before we let it go, and that was the speed of Fred Barnett. He had busted free of Green, but it was Grant who got the lick in. You're going to see that Evans right here is locked on to the running back. It's Ev right here. Oh, we'll clear it. Let's go. First and 10. Sanders coming in motion. And they get to him with Joyner and Rippon breaks the tackle and hits Biner at the 20-yard line. And down at the 18-yard line. Tremendous effort that time by Rippon, who was under a heavy blitz from Seth. Boy, that was almost in the grass. He gave it a little a la Randall Cunningham. He ducked under the pressure. And I don't think he's really known for this. Big, strong guy, Bostic, number 53, coming out there to block. He gets right underneath it. Boy, that was close to being in the grass. Very close. I've seen less called. Here it is. Viner has it now. He's heading up the sideline. Here comes the pursuit. Eric Allen's going to put him down. That completion certainly puts the Redskins in field goal territory. But they still have a minute eight to work with. And right now, on Joe Gibbs' mind is trying to get another touchdown. They fell behind Philadelphia by a pair of field goals after the Eagles failed to stick it into the end zone. Then the Redskins came back and got a scoring pass to Art Monk, and Lomelo's extra point made it 7 6. Now, following a Cunningham interception, the Redskins have marched back inside the 20 yard line. And what Washington did better than anything else in the first half was maintain its poise after turning the ball over a couple of times, limiting the Eagles to two field goals. Now it is Philadelphia under the gun. And Rippon fires complete to Biner. Biner to the five-yard line. Fumble. Philadelphia picks it up. Ben Smith running free. The rookie to the 10. Five. Touchdown, Philadelphia.
take a look at that, Grant. The field might have caused a fumble. And I'm sure they're reviewing it right now. Can you imagine if that's reversed? Take a look at the fumble right here. You can see he's got it tucked under his left arm. He's going there. It's still in his arm, still in his arm, still in his arm. It's not a fumble. It's not a fumble. It's not a fumble. It's not a fumble. The field caused the fumble on that shot. That one shouldn't be tough to decide. We'll take a look now from a higher angle looking down. Here's Ben Smith making a tackle. The ball's still in there. The ball's still in his hand. The field caused the fumble. It is not a fumble. Here's another shot. Hey, look at all these pretty shots. Ball's still in tight. Ball's still in tight. Ball's still in tight. Ball's still in tight. Elbow hits. The officials on the roll, on the field roll, a fumble and a touchdown. It's being reviewed by this guy. That, I don't know why they made that. It was being reviewed by replay immediately, explaining that it was called a touchdown on the field, and as soon as the play occurred, it was immediately being reviewed by George Slatke. And this is one of those situations where now we're in the playoffs where it becomes ever so critical and important. It's at this point where you're almost tempted to say, take as much time as you need, just get it right. I'll tell you this, we saw it three different ways. How much time do you need? All you need is say, hey, it is a, not a fumble. Here's the whole play again for the fifth time. Shouldn't take this long to make that decision. Here it is. He's got it locked up. There it is in his left the arm. The official on the field will fumble and a touchdown. However, however, the play has been reversed. You bet. Yeah, that's what it's in there for. By contact. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll show you this one more time so you know why they have instant replay. The ball is still in his hand, still in his hand. The elbow hits the turf. The ball now comes out right there. He is down. That's a good rule. That's why they. A ground cannot cause the fumble. Buddy knows that. I'll tell you this if you're on the other side of that call, you hate it. Buddy Ryan boldly predicting and trying to put the thought in Ernest Biner's mind said a few days ago that he would fumble three times. <laughs> so many things had to go through Biner's mind when he went off the field on that far side. He says, what's that little Irishman know about me? <laughs> now, what a dramatic turnaround in this game. Plus. Instead of the Eagles leading it, 13 to 7. The Redskins still have an opportunity to score a touchdown. They've got 48 seconds to go. Plus, Ben Smith's tired. That's, <laughs> that was a long run. <laughs> so now the Washington Redskins will have a first and goal. The ball is at the Eagles' six-yard line. 48 seconds left on the clock in this half. Two timeouts remaining for the Redskins. The replay official reversed the call. He moved the runners down by contact. Replacing the ball on the six-yard line. First and goal. Doesn't sound like I like that decision. <laughs> That's what makes instant replay worthwhile. If you get beat, get beat physically by the rules of the game. Now Biner, the lone running back, and the Redskins 
on first and goal, ripping, throwing, complete, and out of bounds inside the five-yard line. That time he went to Viner again coming out of the backfield, and Eric Allen there defensively. What they're doing really is running a pick. The outside receiver, see, they're lining up in a tight formation, Brent, and then running the back out of the backfield. The two receivers outside are coming in. Same when he fumbled on, as you said. You'll see right here, see the back coming out, number 31, here he is. Two people going in, pushing the defense right there. Here's the wide open receiver right there, defender chasing inside out. Second down and goal. Biner, short of the goal line. Mike Pitts, number 74, the first to hit him. Pretty quick, they gotta think about a timeout. Yeah, they did it right here. 24 seconds left, and of course the drama on this Saturday afternoon is just beginning because coming up next, it's the AFC wildcard game. Frank Gifford, Al Michaels, and Dan Deardorff down at Joe Robbie Stadium. It'll be Kansas City against Miami in that one. Here, 24 seconds to go in the first half. Washington leading Philadelphia 7-6. Instant replay with a reversal kept the Eagles from taking an apparent lead into the locker room at the intermission. You can see that the Redskins do a pretty good job in this situation following first and goal. 21 touchdowns, five field goals, no points, only one time. Efficient football, extremely well-coached football team. Nobody does it any better than Joe Gibbs and his coaching staff. Third and goal. If the Eagles can hold, the Redskins, with their last timeout, could quickly set up for their field goal. They'll try to get the touchdown here on third and goal. Miner is stopped. Again, it is Joyner. Boy, is he a player. See, they fired him, brought him inside. They've got to go field goal now. You know what? He just jumped over the top of offensive linemen. You'll see Biner yes, he he appear right to the left side of your screen. He flashes it. He had jumped over the top of offensive lineman. Came in there. Take a look from the end zone. Biner, left side of your screen. Now watch him. They try to cut him low. He bumps, jumps over the, I think, who's that? The big Jacoby, number 66. He jumped over the top of him. You got to jump high to get over the top of a 300-pounder, don't you? Joiner in the first half. Five tackles, one forced fumble, and a pass broken up over the middle. You know, a guy like Joyner, he doesn't make the Pro Bowl. And as a coach, you start talking about he ought to be a Pro Bowler, or he ought to be a Pro Bowler, and the management can get mad at you because the next time around, he's not in the Pro Bowl, but the, the agent says, hey, I want him paid like a Pro Bowl linebacker. I mean, there's a real conflict there. He's a good football player. Biner conferring with some of his offensive linemen. Chip Low Miller who has made 30 of 40 field goals this season. This a 20-yard attempt. And he puts Washington ahead 10 to 6. And the crowd will voice its displeasure at the officials when they head for the locker room here at halftime. We've still got four seconds to go. Brett, what the Eagles have to do now coming off at halftime is to not allow the reversal of that fumble touchdown to bother them emotionally. They got to forget about it play. Back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, Washington leading the Eagles by a score of 10 to 6. And in the minds and hearts of so many Eagle boosters, they thought they were ahead 13 to 7. But an instant replay reversal took away an apparent touchdown by Ben Smith, who did just a fabulous job of forcing a fumble picking it up and then weaving his way downfield but all for naught. See you too made the mistake. He didn't force the fumble. The ground forced the fumble. Remember that. <laughs> I still like the way his helmet got in there by the way. And this is Thomas Sanders. And Sanders out to the 24 yard line. We're going to take one more look from start to finish. Rippon is going to deliver the pass. Biner got inside the 10. There's the young man delivering the tackle. The ground causing the, the fumble. fumble. No question about it. But now watch what Smith does. He becomes a running back. Now he's excited. And this guy can really run. 
really a good football player, will be on most of the all-rookie football teams as a cornerback, fine player, will eventually end up being a free safety. Now, the big thing, is, again, is, is for the Eagles not to get emotionally down. And we'll be back after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC stations. Musburger. Well, here in Philadelphia, the Washington Redskins with a 10-6 lead over the Eagles. Coming up next, Miami hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. And to get more on that, let's send you down to Frank Gifford. Frank? Thank you, Brandon. Of course, Kansas City finished second behind the Raiders in the AFC West. Miami finished behind Buffalo in the AFC East. And as you look at Joe Robbie Stadium, a little trickling uh, fans starting to arrive. Some of the players out early. Getting off the nervous tension, we're here along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff, and we talked at the opening of our telecast today about how memorable these names are to the AFC and to the AFL. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins, yet they have only met once in the playoffs, and it goes back to Christmas Day, 1971, a 37-yard field goal in double overtime, 740 of double overtime, and the Miami Dolphins won it. They went ahead to lose Super Bowl six to the Dallas Cowboys. They won the next two Super Bowls. Of course, the one constant was Don Shuley. He was walking the sidelines then. He'll be walking again today. The two quarterbacks, Lenny Dawson was quarterbacking at the time for the Kansas City Chiefs, and Bob Greasy, Greasy threw for over 250 yards. The two quarterbacks today dramatically differed. Dan Marino, one of the greats, headed for the Hall of Fame, and Steve DeBerg, very unlikely story and a, a very compelling story, this young quarterback. In 71, Frank. At the, heart, young yes, at heart. Oh, yes. He uh, will be 37 in a couple of weeks. In 71, he was in high school. He went to San Jose State. The Cowboys picked him in the 10th round in 77. He was released, and the 49ers picked him up on waivers. But his career didn't last long in San Francisco because they brought Joe Montana in. That sent DeBerg to Denver. Then they traded for John Elway, and that sent DeBerg down to Tampa. He was there for a while. They drafted Testaverde, and he was sent on to Kansas City. And here he is in his 14th season, having by far his best season, a career year with an incredible 23 touchdown passes and only four interceptions. And you talk about tough. Here's a guy two weeks ago who suffers a compound fracture of the small finger of his left hand. He has three pins inserted in that hand. He protects it with a big bandage. He says it means nothing. It's on his non-throwing hand. It won't mean a thing in terms of handing off or changing the game plan. Dan, as far as Dan Marino is concerned, here's a guy we thought uh, would spend his entire career in the playoffs. He gets there in his first three seasons, but it's been a drought. He's back for the first time since after the 85 campaign. I, I don't, know, don't know that you can blame that drought on Dan Marino, Al, because certainly none of the luster has gone from his star. Arguably the finest passing quarterback the National Football League has ever seen, the golden arm of Dan Marino. It'll be interesting to watch today to see how his quick release, how it matches up against Derek Thomas and the best pass rush in the National Football League. Dan Marino just had his eighth season of 20 or more touchdown passes, but look how he has improved in his interception rate. His career till this year, one every 29 passes was intercepted. This year, one of every 48. He has become more patient. He is going to the shorter routes. Thus, he's become a more effective quarterback. Coming up, the second half of our wild card doubleheader. We'll be going back to Philadelphia right after this message. Art Monk. Back at the vet at halftime with Washington leading Philadelphia 10-6 with Lynn Swan and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brad Musburger. Nice to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon. Some fireworks in the uh, first <laughs> half of that game. Remember now yeah. Yeah. that the Eagles jumped ahead with a couple of field goals, but those missed opportunities in the NFL, they have a tendency to come back and bite you. Yeah, well, two good defensive teams struggling, you know, and the offense is struggling against those good defensive teams. But Art Monk came up with the first touchdown. And it was Mark Rippon who had led the Redskins down with two good passes and then this scoring play. They ran a play action pass, took out underneath coverage. You see Hopkins 48 tried to give him a belt right there. Eric Allen covering. He works off back and he moves back inside, just slides around. Too much time given to the quarterback see, to allow all this to happen downfield. Touchdown. Now here's the fumble play, Brent. Here it is. Eric Miner. Now you watch him. He's got the ball under his right arm. It goes down. You'll see Hopkins 48 pass in front of him. You'll see the ball still there. And it, when he hit the turf, the ball came out. The instant replay official called it correctly. Well, here is the hit. And again, Dick Vermeil saying right away that he was down. Should have been whistled dead right there. 
but it was a spectacular play by this young man who scooped the ball up and then dashed for the touchdown that wasn't going to be. Well, the official right there calls it a fumble right now. So they had to overrule his fumble call. See, and everybody's excited. Hey, they're going in to get six points. As I said before we came, went into halftime, the big thing the Eagles can't do now is to allow that to emotionally drain them and sort of take away from the edge. So now here is the field goal, and let's see if it didn't just brush that upright. <laughs> it looks like it's going to. Ooh, it's going your way when that happens. It's going your way. Was indeed going the Washington Redskins way, and we're going to come back and check in with Lynn Swan and see about the injury situation and what's going on downstairs when we get ready for the second half in Philadelphia in just a moment. At halftime, and let's check in with Lynn Swan. Lynn? Thank you, Brent. Just before the game, half, first half ended, I talked to one of the Washington Redskins coach. He felt they were extremely lucky to be in this game at all. He wanted to stop the big plays that the offense of the Eagles had gotten in the first half. Now, when Biner almost fumbled that football, it probably jogged his memory a little bit. He has to be thinking about it. When we talked to Coach Gibbs yesterday, he said, Biner's a man who brought us to this football game. Regardless of how this man plays, we're going to have him in here. So I think he'll be back in the second half, but it might be on his mind a bit more. Well, Lynn, another the thing the Eagles might be thinking about, the rookie wide receivers have been shut out here in the first half. We'll be coming back with a second half in a moment. Set to begin the second half, and the Philadelphia Eagles will receive Low Miller's kick. It was his field goal that made it 10-6 at the intermission. Sanders, one of the deep men, number 45, 10, 15. A penalty marker comes flying. A penalty flag has been thrown. A referee, Gene Barth, in ABC's coverage. So we'll get this penalty sorted out here first. Illegal block in the back on number 85 during the run back. After this is to the goal line, first down. So Gene Barth straightens that out, and the ball is taken back inside the Eagles' 10-yard line. Buddy Ryan in the final year of his five-year contract. Speculation swirling. He's 0-2 in the playoffs. He was upset by the Rams in here last year. Beaten by the Chicago Bears in the Fog Bowl a couple of years ago. Sherman battering his way out to the 14-yard line. Daryl Grant making the stop. Now, ABC's coverage of this NFC wildcard playoff game featuring the Redskins and the Eagles is being brought to you by the Budweiser family of beers, who will also bring you Bud Bowl three coming January 27th. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Here it is, second down and four for the Eagles. Cunningham, again, keeping it on the ground, and a first down for Heath Sherman picking it up and Alvin Walton making the stop. A look at the numbers from the first half. First downs, 9-7, to seven, pretty even. Rushing yards, Eagles 69, Redskins 37. They wanted to be the other way around. Passing yards, though, Redskins 151. Two turnovers, even. New game. The person that ends up minus two is going to lose this thing. The Redskins turned it over twice earlier. And then the Eagles repaid the favor. Here it is, first and ten for Philadelphia. Ball at the 20-yard line for Cunningham, and he'll throw his first pass in the second half. Running up the middle. He had one 25-yard run in the first half. Brent, I think we're going to see more of Randall Cunningham running uh, in this second half. Hey, you only have a half to play. You're behind, and the only way you can keep playing next week is to go ahead and take some chances and go ahead and, and turn it loose a little bit. Cunningham, 5 at 12 for 100 yards. This is good. Sherman, 12 rushes. Keep, keep giving him the ball. Second down and a couple of yards for the first down. Audible. Byers and Sherman change sides of the formation. The toss to Sherman. Byers, an excellent blocker, paves the way. Close to a first down. Might have been just a little short. Tim Johnson, 78, getting the job done defensively. He did a real nice job of coming inside out on that play. Wanted to turn back up, and there he was. Doing a good job. Johnson's been a factor in there. He had 26 starts at Pittsburgh. 
then was traded to the Washington Redskins. That was a good trade. He had two starts coming into this game. Third and short. One yard to go for the first down. Sherman didn't make it. Good penetration. Kurt Govia. Kurt Govia again, he's doing the linebacking job. He just jumps up over the top. And Jeff Beagles trots onto the field to punt. Oh. And Brian Mitchell, number 30, standing inside the Washington's 30-yard line. I'll tell you, a field goal, a field goal was hit the crossbar and going inside, a punt has been dropped and comes right back up to you. It's your day. You see Brian Mitchell fielding that punt. He drops it, it hits his knee. Well now watch this. Jackson swings his right arm in there and pushes it right back up into his stomach. Oh my God. It's going their way. Mark Rippon hits seven of his last eight passes in the first half. Hands off to Biner, Joyner cuts him off, and White comes in to clean up on the hit. How many times have we called Joyner's name? Boy, I'll tell you, he's a good football player and deserves the praise that Buddy Ryan and his defensive coaches give him. Big guy, 6'2", 240, out of Texas El Paso. Look at the arms on him. Working inside out there. Ron Middleton, 87's got him, he's working inside out. He just keeps good leverage. He keeps his outside arm free like you should as an outside backer. Turns it back in. Second down and 10. Clark now going toward the top of your screen, the left side of the formation for the Redskins. Warren, the tight end on the right side. This is Monk in motion behind Rippin. They're coming after him. Rippin got it off, wanted Monk, who was wide open and overthrew him. That time the pressure overthrew him. R Rippin saw the rush coming and didn't relax enough to throw a simple complete pass that time. That should have been a completed pass. Rippin, 11 for 18, 150 yard, one yards, traded off, touchdown for interception. Biner, 12, 24 yards, not running the ball like they'd like to. Give the credit to the Eagles' defense. Passing situation here. Rippin straight back. Gets time, throws, incomplete, and a great second effort by the defensive player that time, William Frizzell. He got back on the ball which after it was batted in the air, might have been caught. Izell Jenkins there first, and then it's Frozell's effort. You'll see him throwing the ball, he gets it out there. Now there's no pass interference once that ball's been batted around. So Frozell comes back in there. Now see, good concentration, he knows the ball's still in the air. Here comes Frozell, no pass interference, ball's already been hit. And that forces a punt. That's a return type ball. Fielded at the 45 by Harris. Good cover. And slapped down at the 47-yard line. Only a three-yard return on a 32-yarder. And a penalty flag thrown back at the 20-yard line. In fact, there are a couple of them, one on each side of the field right now. Well, Gene Barth, he's certainly been in the middle of a lot of Philadelphia-Washington wars through the years. Number 91 of the kicking team was downfield illegally. Penalty refused. First down. You know, Barth had that reversal in the first half, but there was one that wasn't turned around. We'll tell you about that in a moment. The veteran Gene Barth recognized as one of the best. He was the referee, though, for a controversial Eagle Redskin game during the 89 season. Philly rallied to a 20-point deficit, trailed by two, less than two minutes to go. Washington was running out the clock deep in Eagles territory. Riggs fumbled. Al Harris recovered the ball and handed it to Wes Hopkins. Remember the play? It appeared that Harris had handed the ball forward to Hopkins. But after further review, it was not turned over. Eagles pulled it out on a touchdown pass to Jackson. Now, Barth has one reversed in the first half. Here comes Cunningham, again running out of trouble and getting back to the line of scrimmage. But pressure from that Washington defense and Walton making the tackle. You can see, I think, that, that, that they're going to free him up a little bit, move him around. That time, not straight back. Going to get him outside the rush a little bit on a short roll. Nothing there. 
he goes ahead and run it, but he is so dangerous when he runs the football. The Eagles have had only one big play this game, and that was a 66-yard pass from Cunningham to Keith Jackson. Their wide receivers, the two rookies, Williams and Barnett, have been shut out. Cunningham back, complete, and inside the 35-yard line, and that's his tight end again. So it is either Mr. Jackson or he doesn't get it downfield. Here is, they have a linebacker on him right here. Right now, Andre Collins, number 55, he's backed up by the safety. He's trailing. You'll see the safety come in from the left side of your screen right there, coming in late. Didn't quite get there. There he is, number 40, was backing him up. They're going to have to crowd him a little closer with that safety if they want to stop that kind of pass. Three straight Pro Bowls. Keith Jackson today with four catches for 104 yards. Now it is first and 10 for the Eagles at the Washington 32-yard line. Sherman cut off. Fumble! The Washington Redskins with Tim Johnson leading the way force a turnover. I think they're going to take a look at that. Of course, they review everything that's questionable, but that may fall into the same category. Good inside penetration. Good inside penetration by the defensive line. You see the ball in there. No, that is a fumble all the way. That's Andre Collins, number 55, knocked it out with his right hand. And then the rookie from Penn State went after, after it, it and made the recovery for Washington. He's had an outstanding year. It's the first time in Washington Redskins in years that a rookie red, a wide, excuse me, a rookie linebacker has started all 16 games. The officials on the field will fumble. As a review by the replay official, the call stands. First down. So the Redskins with the ball coming out from their own 45-yard line. Andre Collins, one of 19 children. You learn to take the ball away at 19 just to get the, to the table, don't you? Griffin brings the offense back to the line again. Sanders, Steiner, the ball carrier, to the 49. That's again that wing back trap. They're trying to get back over to the left and start the defense moving right, then cut back behind that wing back block. Well, I didn't expect the ball to be turned over this many times. Did you, Brent? No, but so unpredictable. Yeah, a lot of good contact. Did. And the pressure out there, the feelings that have built up over the course of the season between these two teams also. Second down now and seven yards for the Redskins. They keep moving that formation. Sanders coming in motion, ripping rolling, coming to the near side, too high for Monk, who was well covered and out of bounds. The ball was tipped. I'm not sure who got it. It might have been Pitts, but somebody tipped that football. They did a half roll. Instead of going straight back, again, moving away from the pressure, Again, it was Seth Joyner, I think. Got it. You see Reggie White there? There's Joyner, number 59. He just tipped the ball, just enough to break it. See, it's not spiraling as it was. Throws it a little bit high. Dr. Stefano on the sideline, darn near catches it. Nice to have someone who can recognize the folks on the side. Third down, down the middle. Sanders is open, and he dropped it. You know something? The Eagles have had real trouble with tight passing formations every time they've been in them. I would expect the Redskins to come out in tight passing formations, run those crossing patterns, and go that way. This was a touchdown. He was open. He was wide open. This should be a touchdown. There's Sanders just off the fingertips. They've had a man open each time they've used that type of formation and pattern combination. Terrific punt by Goodburn. Down to the six-yard line. What a sensational punt by Kelly Goodburn out of Emporia State. He buries the Eagles down inside the 10, a 47-yarder. We'll be right back. The Philadelphia Eagles are 94 yards away. In one ominous note, they have turned it over three times in their last 10 plays from scrimmage.
Anthony Tony checking in as running back. He replaced Sherman. What I was talking about, tight offensive formation. Defense all in constricted here. You'll see the receiver come off. Here we go, see crossing patterns. Each time they've used a formation similar to this, they have turned the receiver loose. There it is, boy, that's, well, that looks close enough to catch, Ricky. Here it is, coming back down. Boy, he bet both hands on that ball. Should make that catch, Brent. Now Cunningham from the end zone. Steps away from pressure and man, brings it from the other side along with Andre Collins. So the two of them gang up on Randall Cunningham and it's been tough going against this Washington defense. That's the fourth sack of Cunningham. The corners have been doing a good job of taking away the wide receivers and the corners have a real problem because they cover tight man to man and when he scrambles, the receiver can see him come out and scramble, but the corners can't. And that was a real concern of both Washington Redskins corners. So far, it hasn't hurt them. Third down and 10. Tony who replaced Sherman after that fumble is the lone running back. He's the ball carrier. He pounds his way for a couple of yards. The crowd not liking the play call in that situation. Monty Coleman, 51, stepping in. Nothing wrong with that call. When you're a good defensive football team, you don't want to take any chances down there. It's not going real well. Punt the football and play good defense. Zach's had nine sacks coming in. They had four today. Their offensive line has been inconsistent all year. Injuries, guys banged up, rotating people in and out, guys being in camp two weeks and all of a sudden starting the ball game. That's tough to be real sound in pass protection. Jeff Beagles. That's not a real good punt, though. Mitchell at the 40. Inside the 30-yard line. Andre. That's the time when a punter has to come up with a beat punt, not a lousy punt. So we'll come right back. Skins lead it by four points. The owner on the right has a decision to make. That's his general manager, Harry Gamble, seated next to him in the box here at the vet. A fan voting in favor of keeping Buddy Ryan, regardless of what happens today. His five-year contract coming to an end. And remember when he came into Philadelphia, he said in five years, we'll go to the big dance. Well, to get to that big dance, they're going to have to rally here first against the Washington Redskins. Washington threatening again. Ball at the Philadelphia 30-yard line. Mark Rippin. Handy to Ernest Miner, who slams ahead for a yard or two, and Clyde Simmons, 96, getting credit for the tackle. You know who did a good job in there that time was Jerome Brown. I'll tell you, he's playing in some pain. Came down that uh, backside real well and collapsed it. Imagine if tennis players can't play tennis because they have a sore shoulder. Here's a guy with a bad shoulder playing contact sports. Clark and Monk are out to the left. Ripping out a quick count. Oh, no throws in underneath the two wide men to Biner, and he's got a first down inside the 20 yard line. Again, well executed play. Again, Brent, tight formations. See, they're turning people loose. No one even covered them. That's a mistake. That's not getting beat physically, that's getting beat mentally. First and 10. The ball is going to be spotted at the Eagles' 18-yard line. Again, Biner. Big hole on the right side, and he makes his way inside the 10-yard line. If they get in that tight formation again down here and cross those people, they either got to go into a, they either have to go into a formation coverage-wise where they can switch people or just go zone on them. But they can't turn people loose like that. Here's a good binder, cut back, look at him shake and break, get up field like that. Ooh, good contact there. First down. Feiner bounces outside, battling toward the goal line. Very close. 
Wes Hopkins bringing him down. It'll be a first and goal for Washington. Good blocking at the point of the attack. You'll see the wing back here to the right side of your screen. Direct handoff, nothing fancy. Middleton, big man on Joyner, 50-90. Now the speed to accelerate outside and a wide receiver getting a turnout block on Eric Allen, number 21. Everybody doing what they have to do. I didn't realize he could accelerate quite that quickly. Middleton and Warren are the two tight ends, and there was a substitution problem, and the clock had come down to seven seconds, so Rippon called a timeout. And a reminder that the winter tour warms up as bowling's high rollers head into California for the 175,000 AC Delco Classic, the season premiere of ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday right here on ABC. Here are the Washington Redskins threatening again. First and goal at the two-yard line. The Eagles let some opportunities get away from them early in the early game. Early in the game. They were moving the ball. They got the big play to Jackson. Didn't get that, but three points out of it twice. But not many people, if anybody in the National Football League, does any better job than that guy. And Buddy's done a great job here. He has drafted real well. He's put, put him into the playoffs three years in a row. There were coaches who started at the same time that have already been fired. This time it was Riggs getting the call short of the end zone. And it will be second and goal. They make it really tough down there for that. Evans, number 56, in the middle of your screen. He is really physical. Redskins inside the 22 possessions. What's touch, one touchdown, one field goal. They would sure like to get more than a field goal out of here. And this is an obvious situation. But when you have first and goal to go down there, you ought to put it in. Rippin on a fake to Riggs, throws low and incomplete. Good fake. Had Johnson for a fraction of a second and threw low. You can see what action away from the point of attack does to the defense. See, he's going action left. Now he comes back out right, defense all there. Here he comes off with a little delay move. He throws it a little bit too low for the receiver to hang on to it. Good call, though. Very good call. All they had to do was execute it. Griffin is only one of six this half. It is third and goal. Ernest Biner has returned to the backfield. These kind of situations, third and three down here, it's like a third and 100 miles are coming after him. Incomplete and a terrific defensive play by the rookie, Ben Benny Smith. Smith. Benny Smith on Gary Clark, just trying the little slant in pattern. Good defense by Ben Smith. Normally going to play you inside. See, you don't want to give him that inside move. He tries to take it anyway. He go, oh, crime. He's holding him. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Send some glasses down to those officials down there. He got away with it, Benny. That's all right. That's all part of this league, I'm sure. A four-point lead. And Low Miller hammers the field goal. But the Eagles stay very much alive. 13-6. That was a critical series inside the five-yard line. This keeps the Eagles within seven points here and 229 to go in the third quarter. So both teams have had difficulty scoring touchdowns. Well, Ben Smith down there got away with holding. He had the long fumble play called back. Maybe it just sort of bounced out. Neither team doing a great job of taking advantage of their opportunities down inside the 20. Mark Rippon was limping just a bit when he came to the line that time. Let's see if we can pick up. Uh, he might have slightly injured himself. See, he's coming back out. And remember, he's had a knee problem. Here he is out there. He came down on his ankle. He came down on his ankle. What a bad angle. <laughs> Sam 
Sanders. Ooh. Hit hard. Short of that 20 yard line. And that was Raven Caldwell, number 50. Washington owner Jack Kent Cook has traveled down here. His box in Philadelphia not nearly as powerful as the one back in Washington. And Jim McMahon trots onto the field. Now, this was one of those key pickups by the Philadelphia Eagles this year. The veteran McMahon will now get a series in place of Randall Cunningham. The offense has not scored a touchdown, and they put the veteran in there, and a lot of teams said early that this might have been a key pickup for the team. It was a key pickup. He doesn't even take a snap of the offense he drills in practice. Doesn't even take a snap. Randall takes 100% of them, but he's so sharp and so experienced, he can go in the hole and run the offense. But boy, I'll tell you stuff, what's wrong with Randall? Why take him out? I mean, Randall Cunningham can make a big play at, at the next snap. You never know when he's going to do it. I'll guarantee you, Jim McMahon ain't going to run for 40. What's wrong with him? Cunningham on the bench, and we'll get a check from downstairs. Meanwhile, Jim McMahon, second and ten. The ball at the Eagle 18. And the former Chicago Bears star back again, throws in complete behind fires. He was under heavy pressure that time. Wilbur Marshall, his former teammate, number 58, was up among the Washington defensive players closing in on McMahon. I wonder if taking a, a quarterback, the stature of Cunningham, out of the ball game, what that does to the morale of the offensive football team. In, in the biggest game they're going to play in, and all of a sudden the biggest guy, the guy that took him there, he isn't even in there. The word from the Washington sideline is that Rippon injured an ankle in the first half and aggravated it in that sequence that we saw just a short time ago. This is third and 10 for McMahon, who's trying to ignite a fire. McMahon throws incomplete, and they still can't get the rookie wideouts involved as Daryl Green steps right in front of Fred Barnett and knocks the ball incomplete. Here's Randall. So Randall Cunningham forced to watch as Jim McMahon replaces him and Jeff Fiegels. You could see Daryl Green getting in front of Barnett. And Fiegels hangs a up nice a punt point. for Mitchell at the 35. The 45. The Washington Redskins with a seven point lead. And the one thing that the defensive unit has to feel very positive about right now is that at least for the time being they are not looking at Randall Cunningham. They do not have to worry about Cunningham breaking out and running for 15 20 yards as long as Jim McMahon stays in the game. And the word from the Eagle bench is there's nothing wrong with Cunningham. Coach Ryan just elected to put McMahon into the game. Boy that's tough. I mean that's tough for me to understand. Now it's first and ten for Mark Griffin and the Washington Redskins. They're up by seven. On a delay, Finer getting close to midfield and Pitts making the stop. Number 74. That's that good, solid, old counter gap play. They run that from every formation they have in the book. They're doing a lot of audibling with that play in recent years and running it away from the strengths of defenses. Rippon has struggled with his passing here in the second half. He was red hot late in the second quarter, but he has not recaptured that rhythm. He's only one of seven. Now second down and five for the skin. Elected to come with Finer. He gets to midfield. It'll be third down and five. Reggie White there defensively. I think you've got to be careful offensively from a Redskins standpoint of getting too conservative. Too conservative. They've only got a seven point lead. Got guys like Big Reggie there. Don Burrow on the left calling the signals. Joe Gibbs had a touchdown pass dropped by Ricky Sanders. 
couple of series ago. Sanders is back in the game. Sanders, Monk, and Clark are stacked on the right side. And Rippon looks. Now he'll go deep for Clark. He's got him. 20, 15, 10, 5, and out of bounds at the 5-yard line. An interesting formation as they stack them. Same one. Same formation. They haven't adjusted to it yet. They're either going to have to go to combination coverages or lock on man-to-man -man and stay on it or just drop off and play zone, but don't turn somebody loose. That time the defender was turned all the way around. The Redskins are taking momentum. Here's Hopkins right there in the face, so they had to be bringing the safety. They had to be locked on man-to-man. -man. They just beat man-to-man -man coverage right here. And Mr. Clark is the guy they told us last night would be the guy that would make the big play. That was Azell Jenkins, number 46, coming over to push him out of bounds. Out of bounds, just inside the four-yard line. Skins will try it again. Miner, the running back, quick count, throw on first down, incomplete. Oh. Wide must have... open against Smith that time, who managed to turn on Clark. See what they do also in these tight areas with that type of formation, all in tight. They take the two inside guys that would be, someone would be playing the inside guy man to man. The outside guys come in and run into the coverage guys. It's a pick. It is actually not a legal play. It isn't called very often. They went away from the veteran, Eric Allen, who was the corner on the right side, used a quick count, turned the rookie around, and he was able to get the job done in the end zone. Now lifting again, second and goal from the four. Rippon off a of fake, pressure from the backside, gets loose for the diving catch and a touchdown for Washington. Gary Clark makes a diving catch as Rippon's ankle obviously bothering him. You'll see a rookie, number 26, looking back into the ball. The quarterback went away. He has no idea where the receiver is. Rookie mistake. You can't do that. You're in man-to-man -man coverage. You better not be looking back into the backfield. You better concentrate on what that guy's doing that you're supposed to be covering. Benny makes a rookie mistake. The playoffs are underway, and the rookies are under fire in Philadelphia. There are two wideouts being shut out, and now Ben Smith is beaten for a touchdown by the veteran Gary Clark, an experience starting to tell as Washington goes ahead 20 to 6. Here it is. Here's Rippon. You'll notice he makes this throw. He's outside Reggie White. Now watch him start limping. That ankle is bothering him. Look, he's, don't come down on too hard. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I feel the Eagles sinking a little bit. The Redskins are draining him. Emotionally. Boy, I'll tell you, he got a long time to play. There was a lot of talk after that Monday night war in here of body bags being needed by the Washington Redskins to carry all their injured players back to Washington. The kind of thing that you don't forget in the National Football League and helps you focus in just a little bit more when you get a shot at a rematch. Yet having said that, the Eagles had plenty of opportunities in the first half, and Randall Cunningham could not get the Eagles into the end zone. And about the only thing that the experts say separates Cunningham from being rated number one is the ability to win the big playoff game. Here he has been benched. It is 20 to 6. And Low Miller with the kickoff. Sanders from the 15. Fumble! I'll tell you, they're going in the tank. This time, though, they get it back. Woo! Come to the end of the third quarter. And we'll be back after a word from our ABC stations. Here's Sanders, number 45, on that kickoff return. Notice that he has the ball really loose out away from his body. He's got to keep that. There he gets it drawn inside. Now he'll call, well, number 50. He sticks his hand in there and knocks it out. Now it's live. Can't see who gets it underneath there. You've got to tuck that ball in tight. After missing one series, Randall the Rocket Cunningham is back. And he needs the light of fire under this Philadelphia offense. On first down, he throws to Byers, his first catch of the day. He 
the Redskins have been doing a good job on, on Byers and those guys by jamming them as they come out, knocking them off their pass. They, and they haven't been getting out of the backfield cleanly. Good coaching by the linebacker coach, Larry Pecatello from the Redskins. And the Skins Ooh. are tough when they take that lead into the fourth. But I'll tell you, the Redskins, I mean, the Eagles have been really efficient fourth quarter offensively, having scored 141 points. They can come back. A couple of touchdowns down right now, and this is number 45. Hit beautifully by Collins. Tony could not get it. And there is a penalty marker down on the play. I think there was some holding there, Brent. Third quarter stats, rushing yards picking up for the Redskins. A little passing yards, 211 to 93 total offense. Turnovers, Eagles are minus one. That right now is really hurting them. And this a holding call, which will be marched off against Philadelphia. You know, amongst them during the season, Byers and the two rookie wideouts, Williams and Barnett, caught 154 passes. Today, only one catch, that one by Byers. Here's a situation where they need one of their receivers again. Tony, the running back. Steps away from trouble with the 25 and short of that first down. Marshall up into him. Alexander, who is back in there playing center that came into the ball game, banged up, is down now, favoring that knee at the 10-yard line. He wanted to come back and play, and he couldn't do it, and he's upset about it. So Alexander will be replaced by Ben Tamborello. We'll take a break and come right back. Santa. David Alexander wanting so badly to finish this game up he has been forced to the sideline and Ben Tamborello now centering. This is a big play third and five. Look for him to try to get the ball to Byers. He's the possession guy. If not him it'll be Jackson. They haven't gotten the ball to wide receivers yet. Cunningham from the shotgun will throw incomplete and Green did it again. Well, Green is shutting game. out Fred Barnett. He's all over him. You know, I asked Green about Barnett, and he says, you know, Coach, I didn't gain the status and credibility I have as a corner by not respecting the people I play. I respect him. He's a fine young receiver, but I have a book on him. He said, I have a book on him. He demonstrates he was reading the right page that time. Now Fiegel's the punt again, standing at the Eagle 10. That's Mitchell. Washington will try to get it near midfield and go to ball control here in the fourth quarter. Nice punt. Beautiful punt. Mitchell at the 30. 35 out to the 39. Now the Gibbs staff wants to go to work on the clock and the word is that Alexander probably will not be able to return today. Now Washington and the situation on the clock. Washington, I think, would make a mistake to try to run the ball three times and three times and three times for the first down. I've seen the Eagles many, many times, and they're so explosive in the fourth quarter, having scored 118 points. Randall can light it up, so they, they've got to stay with what's going for them. I'd stay with those tight formations and run, run those picks and those little slant patterns coming out of the backfield. This time, though, Clark is to the left, and Riggs, who has checked in as the running back, this will leave them in second and long. Jesse Small, number 52. They really like him here in town. Second round pick a year ago. When Buddy drafted him, he says, he's my outside linebacker. He'll be a starter. Well, he didn't start as a rookie. He started this year. Made 72 tackles. Great movement. He can run with a running back, too. Both Art Monk and Gary Clark have caught touchdown passes today. Ricky Sanders dropped what would have been a third one. Now Rippin to throw again from that same formation. Rippin incomplete. That's one way to defense that formation. Good pressure that time by Clyde Simmons. Hard inside rush. Just kept right on coming. They had a stunt. Tackle came outside. He came inside. Clyde Simmons just kept coming. He hasn't had the year he had last year and only having seven and a half sacks this year, 15 and a half last year. He's been a little bit hurt. No excuses made by Clyde Simmons. He said that's all part of football. Biner checks into the backfield. The Skins have used him today, slipping out in passing situations, along with running from scrimmage. 
third and long. Going long for it all. Sanders, a diving catch, but he dropped it at the 20 yard line. <laughs> that was close to six points. Art Monk was turned loose completely. Nobody covered him. If he'd have seen him, he could have caught it and walked for 20 yards before a defender would have been around him. That's that same formation, same type of combination. Here it is, laid right out in front of him, similar to the one he couldn't hold on before. That ball should have been caught. He normally makes that catch. Now, good burn. So it was three Ooh. downs and out. Beautiful punt, though. Harris at the 15, 20, and down at the 21-yard line. 12 minutes and 29 seconds to go here in regulation. But the Eagles are down a pair of touchdowns. A job by the Washington defensive team here this afternoon in Philadelphia. They've allowed only two field goals. Their last eight possessions. Punt, fumble, interception, punt, fumble, punt, punt, punt. Seven yards in the last nine offensive plays. That's outstanding defense. Say, I'd just start being alert for the, the flea flicker and the quarterback keep bootleg and that kind of stuff because that's all part of their offense. Cunningham throwing complete, just short of the first down, and Calvin Williams making his first catch of the game. No so, huddle. And they're going to go without a huddle now. Plenty of time left, but they're <laughs> down a couple of scores, and they're going to have to measure for the first down. Eagles 10 consecutive possessions without scoring. Longest streak of the season. The last one's against the Redskins. You could tell yesterday in talking with Eagle players that they respect the Redskins, even though they trounced them or really got after them physically on a Monday night a few weeks ago. Well, one of the fellows who learned at the knee of George Allen doing the job as the defensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins, that would be Richie Pettibone. That whole defensive staff, Larry Pecatello, the linebacker coach, and Torky Torkins in the defensive line, M. Thomas, secondary, they've done a real good job today. But actually, you know, the Eagle defense hasn't done poorly. This is the offense has put them back on the field too quick. Well, second and inches, obviously, in the NFL, that's a free shot for a quarterback if he wants to take it. Sanders, number 45, was being used as the running back before Mayhew brought him down. Real good job of double teaming at the point of attack, then pulling the guard. No huddle. Cunningham over the middle of Sanders. And Sanders makes his way to the 48. And Andre Collins, the rookie, bringing him down. Randall Cunningham was just super in the fourth quarter. I believe he plays his best football in the fourth quarter. Second down and two. Spent a series over on the bench, clearing his head. Now he's back to Philadelphia, has the time. First down to Sanders, and Sanders to the 44-yard line where Marshall makes the hit. And the Eagles starting to move the ball without the huddle. See, they're going to check downs, taking that back out. Of, and I think right now the audible for no huddle is to play zone. They're dropping the back out of the backfield, just checking it down and giving it to him in front of the zone. Now Marshall had gone out wide. He says something to Green. He comes back in tight defensively into the formation. On first and 10 again from the shotgun under fire. Hits fires again. And it's about a nine or 10 yard gain on first down. Very close to a first down. Todd Bowles, the corner over there. And the Eagles are finally getting into an offensive rhythm here. It was a first down. That no huddle has loosened up the defense. It hasn't taken any efficiency away from the offense. In fact, they're more efficient right now. Thomas Sanders, a key substitute for Buddy Ryan, checking into that backfield. Number 45 has been able to slip out. Byers goes way to the left as a wide receiver. On first down, Cunningham for the blind side under pressure, steps away from it. Penalty marker has been thrown on this play. And Randall forced out at the 23. 
right, but there was a penalty marker. I think we have a holding penalty. Stopping themselves. But he seems pretty calm observing all that. Holding 69 offense. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. 69, Bruce Colley, the veteran from the San Francisco 49ers. Said me, I didn't hold him. Joe Kipp's coaching staff has done spectacular jobs on the field in playoff games. You can see in the far right hand of the screen, he's got him right by the jersey, pulling him down, trying to prevent Tim Johnson, 78, from getting to the quarterback. Now, first and 20. The shotgun, Sanders, and he dropped that one. Had a screen pass going on out there. Joe Gibbs, twice in the last few years, has taken the Redskins into Chicago and upset the Bears as underdogs. Here today, Gibbs and the Skins came in a four-point underdog, and in the playoffs, he has won 11 games and lost only three. You know what Joe said to me last night? He said, this is gonna be a heck of a game. He said, in fact, I wish I could buy a hot dog and just go up and sit and watch it. He said, it's gonna be a dandy. If you're an Eagle fan, you get indigestion. <laughs> Second down and 20. Cunningham steps away from the pressure again, goes to the end zone. I'll tell you, Randall could have run that time for a long way. He'd have had to. First down, it was 20 <laughs> yards to go. He had 20 Barnett yards to go. The wide receiver. Yeah. There's Barnett, top left side of your screen. Green covering him outside. They're just running down the sideline. Third, three times the fastest man in the NFL. Barnett got a step on him. He's going to jump, jump, jump. Woo, those plays are always close. Todd Bowles, number 23, the free safety, comes over and gets involved. When a ball's in the air that long, a safety can get there. They need 20. <laughs> Cunningham, again under pressure, will try to run for it this time. And he's short of that first down. A decision here with 9.24 to go and down by 14. Good. Let's see where they're going to put the ball down. It's a 47, 48 yard field goal attempt if they try a field goal. Ball is right. down to 31. 31, 41, 48. He's made him from that distance. Nine minutes to go. Not even hesitating. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Philadelphia has been a good team on fourth down this season. They are 9 of 12 this year. They have eight yards to go. Now you really have to spy on Randall. Cunningham was under pressure, incomplete. And it was Mann who got in on Cunningham. Jackson's upset with that. Jackson thought he was interfered with. This was an alley-oop type thing. They just threw it up high. He was under good pressure. You'll see Jackson number 88. Hooked on man-to-man -man right there. Now watch, now, he's doing a little bit of pushing around there too. Look at him using his left hand. Then he thinks he's interfered with. That's a clean play. <laughs> but you've got to act. You've got to try to get the call. A.J. Johnson working on him pretty good, number 47. First and 10 for Washington. Eight and a half minutes to go. Gerald Riggs, the running back, gets the call. Steps out to the 31-yard line. And Jesse Small there. Again, that counter gap. They love that play. We called Jesse Small's name a number of times today. I'd get back in that tight formation and run those crossing patterns again. Jesse Small, not the biggest linebacker, but boy, he can move. Actually, he's bigger now than I thought he was. 230. The Redskins are taking their time, letting it tick down it as they come out of the huddle, bringing the clock down to within five seconds, then snapping the ball. And Riggs blasts out for a first down. Washington very much now in control of this playoff game. 7.40 to go. They 
they ran that counter gap. Nobody runs it like they do, or as well. A lot of people in the NFL have quit running. They say they can't make it go any longer. The defenses have caught up with it. Not with the Redskins. Rippon handing to Riggs, who breaks out again across midfield. And the offensive line of the Skins continuing to exert itself now. Redskins got to get in. I mean, excuse me, the Eagles have got to get into their blitz package. Come on, baby. go after them. Get in, get them in the backfield. Bring those linebackers. They've been known for that all year. Bring those safeties. Lachey doing an excellent job on Simmons. Jacoby locked up with White much of the afternoon. Bostic the center. Schlereth and McKenzie are the guards, and that's the clock winding down. And you'll see that the Redskins will bring it on down to within five seconds. On the game clock, about 6.10 to go right now. Now Ripon will go ahead and put the ball in play. Riggs breaks out. Big hole, and he's across the 30-yard line. See, the defense is really starting to pursue. They over-pursued. They cut off the backside defense. You'll see it's a trap up inside. He pulls on the inside linebacker, Block Evans. You'll see this now. Low angle, coming right at you. You be the linebacker. See the guard pull, steps around, gets on Evans. Here comes Riggs up. Oh, a giant hole in there. Yeah, I think Brent could run through that one. As long as you take your coat off. That's right. As long as I had a car to try to get through it. First and ten for Washington. The ball is at the Eagles 30. Five and a half minutes. And again it is Riggs. Okay, when you run at Reggie White, you end up with a fight in your hands. People are saying Reggie White hasn't had the year this year that he's had the past with only 15 sacks. And in the years he had 21, he had 18. And that, but people double him all the time. Plus people, you know, he, how many great tackles does he play against? He plays against better people more often than not. Two good, ta two good games against the Giants, two good games against these guys, better offensive lines. in control of this first round playoff game. Briggs is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Reggie. There he is. We just talked about him. He is so quick. I know Bruce Smith is claiming that he is better because he sacks more, but Reggie says, you know, I take pride in the fact that we're the number one team against the run in the NFL, and that's our first responsibility. And rush the passer second. Like Buddy, I asked Buddy about Bruce Smith's uh, comment. He said, you know, if, if, if Bruce Smith is better than uh, Reggie White, there ought to be a law against him. Well, it was body bags for the Redskins the last time, and who knows, maybe it'll be a pine box for Buddy after this one with all the talk and speculation in Philadelphia the last week. Here's that tight coordination again. Rippin will drop to Biner, who checked back in the game. Good defense. Fourth down. That's a nice little offensive package they came up with that, that formation. Joe Gibbs and his offensive coaches do a good job of that. Rod Dower, the quarterback coach, Jim Hannafin, and the offensive line coach. They did a nice job of that package. Ask the professionals who they would select as a man to win one game as a head coach, and there are many around the league who would say Joe Gibbs. And his staff. They've been together for a long time, most of those guys. Joe's the first one to give credit to the rest of his people. Now that defensive play took them out of field goal range, and Kelly Goodburn will come in and punt. Time remaining is 3:15, and the Eagle offense has been stymied here this afternoon. They'll bring it all the way down, take the five-yard penalty, but get the game clock down to 3:11. And who knows, they may look back on this as the game that saved instant replay toward the end of the first half. Delay of game, five yard penalty, still fourth down. An apparent Eagle touchdown was reversed because it was ruled legitimately that the receiver, Ernest Biner, had gone down and was down before he turned the ball over to Ben Smith. 
But that has been the critical play in this ball game. Fair catch at the 11 by Harris. And the sun is starting to set on the Philadelphia Eagles. And in Philadelphia, the Redskins with a 20 to 6 lead, and the Skins just took 528 off the clock before they punted it back to Randall Cunningham. The Eagles this year have not played an entire game without scoring at least one touchdown. Cunningham firing complete. Collins making the stop on Sanders, who had slipped out of the backfield. And it will be second and short for Philadelphia, but that certainly doesn't matter now. They need touchdowns and quickly. The Redskins just playing a loose zone defense. Inside handoff for the first down. And the crowd won't like that play. <laughs> I've heard that noise before. And much louder. <laughs> you mean they didn't like some of your sequences oh, down there? I, I'd like to be able to tell the people the things they called me walking out underneath that tunnel sometimes. I mean, you can't use it in the air. <laughs> right in half. Here he goes. Forced out on the run. And Coleman in hot pursuit. Getting him out of bounds at the 49. The clock is stopped with 220. A 24-yard run. Well, he needs to launch one of his rockets right here if he can get one of his <laughs> wideouts open Stop deep. Right. But Barnett has been shut down by Daryl Green. Williams held the one pass by Martin Mayhew on the other side. Just a spectacular job by the Washington defense. A year ago, he was a favorite against the Los Angeles Rams, and they were beaten up and thus upset by the Los Angeles Rams. Two years ago, it was the fog in Chicago. There aren't many excuses for this one. And here's the pass to Sanders to the 46-yard line, and Monty Coleman, number 51 there. You know, and the other thing, this Redskin football team is healthier now. I mean, the Rippin's back. They got uh, Riggs back. These kind of guys, you know, they're going to go to that next ball game maybe uh, uh, just a week stronger. Well, we'll take a break here at the two-minute warning. We'll come back and show you who Washington would play next week. What would be next for Washington, if they hold up here for the last two minutes, they would go to San Francisco if the Bears beat New Orleans and Soldier Field tomorrow. But they would go to play the Giants. It would be Washington at the Giants if the Saints upset the Bears in Soldier Field. So everything is dependent upon that game tomorrow. They would have to go play New York again. Can you imagine a third war? I mean, they have played two very intense football games with the, Red, the Giants winning both of them. Well, they're coming out of this intense rivalry, having split. They won 13-7 down at RFK, lost 28-14. Now Cunningham, oh, and down he goes. Number 78, Tim Johnson, who's played a terrific game at defensive tackle today. The weakness of the Eagles' offensive line has really been demonstrated today because the Redskins are really overpowered them. They just had too many guys banged up over the year to hold these guys off. On third down, incomplete. And the Eagles coming up to what might be their last play of the season. And the last time Cunningham and the Eagles were held without a touchdown was week 10 of 1989. That was against Washington. Joe Gibbs and the Redskins beat them 10 to 3. You know, and talking to Rich Kotite in preparation for this game, he was very confident they had a very, very solid plan that it would be efficient. You know, he didn't plan on blowing them out, but he really thought it would be much better today, obviously. Fourth down. Man was on the ground. He fires on the ground. There was talk in Philadelphia all week as the fans pour out of here about how the players were going to try to win this one to save Buddy's job. And there are a lot of folks in athletics who don't think that's a very good source of motivation. No, I tell you, the only good kind of motivation is that comes from within. And I 23 green, 77 white, first down Washington. Artificial sources of motivation never work. And that's it. 
And I don't blame the players for or making those kind of comments because they do rally around Buddy and they like him. But I, I don't think this ball game is the ball game that's going to decide what they do with Buddy Ryan. Let's see what we have here. Well, Cunningham had his wide men covered deep again. And, and that was a, a strange call. It was going to a screen pass. They were, they were going to a screen. Now Riggs will bring a few more seconds off that clock at a minute and a half. And the Washington Redskins are going to beat the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. And there is Richie Pettibone over with Grant, one of his standout defensive linemen. And of course, right after this game, we'll check in again with Frank Gifford, and then you'll be seeing the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs. Your thoughts about that game? Well, Kansas City is the rising team in the AFC, and I think they match up real well against the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins with those speed receivers, Kansas City with those real fine corners. It's going to be a good one. So another playoff heartache for Cunningham, and meanwhile for Jack Kent Cook and the Washington Redskins. Franchise could not be happier about what it accomplished a couple of weeks ago. Folks thought maybe it was the end when they blew the home field advantage by losing to Indianapolis. But they have come on the road and they fell behind by two field goals here this afternoon before scoring on a touchdown pass to Art Monk. The extra point put them up in the second quarter for the first time, seven to six. Then the big play, and we'll review it in our post game show. Lynn Swan downstairs, I'm sure, will be able to get some reaction from the participants in that big play which was turned around and so Joe Gibbs will move his record to 12 and 3 he's up there with the legends oh he's up there with the good ones excellent excellent football coach Mr. Barnett he's dejected Daryl Green in the middle of the screen with a big smile Randall he's had better days Jackson he's had better days Jackson's best Pass reception came in the first quarter 66 yarder which set up a touchdown but early on the Eagles could not score inside the 20 yard line. They had two opportunities when they were down there and both times they settled for field goals. Washington turned the ball over twice early. Then it was the Eagles who started turning it over. That's a 40 second timeout. And for Mark Rippon when a quarterback like Rippon is being booed at home as he was not long ago. It's perhaps to his advantage to be able to come on the road for a playoff game because if they had fallen behind not that the RFK isn't a sensational place for a home team it always has been through the years but it might have been a little more relaxing for Rippon to come in here today. They didn't pay much attention to him. I don't think people realize how good this young man Mark Rippon is. He was in the Pro Bowl a year ago but in his career he throws a touchdown pass every 18 pass attempts. That's number two in the NFL among act, act, active quarterbacks. And number, he throws 10, one every 10 in completions. That's outstanding. Well, it's going to punt it back to the Eagles and down there at the 20 yard line. And this playoff game has been presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and the National Football League is prohibited. We want to thank our crew here today. The executive producer of ABC's NFL Football is Jeffrey Mason. Today's NFC wildcard playoff game was produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Larry Cam. Nice job downstairs, gentlemen. Our technical director, Gary Larkins, and our associate directors, David Kiviat and Patrick McManus. So the final seconds tick away on an empty scene here at Veterans Stadium. An important game for Buddy Ryan, Randall Cunningham, and the Eagles. And it is going to end in a disappointing fashion. And for Washington, their folks couldn't be happier. Sitting back in those deep zones, you get scrambling around like that, that really just eats up the clock takes a lot of time to do all that after what happened here on that Monday night all that talk Joe Gibbs has to be so happy about what's transpired here today he was totally concerned last night I mean he was into it you recognize that before I did he was uptight but we're going to be checking in with Frank Gifford here soon 
on that upcoming Miami Kansas City game. This is the second game on ABC this afternoon. Sanders turned in some positive plays coming off the Eagle bench 14 more yards. So this battle will be renewed next season. That's Biner limping off on that ankle. He may not be ready next week. They usually get. They usually get worse as it cools off. So Washington advances to the second round. They will play either Chicago or New Orleans. Joe Gibbs with a big one. Jack Kent Cook delighted upstairs. And a disappointment for Buddy Ryan, who has now gone 0-3 as a playoff coach with the Eagles. And our next game will match the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs down in Joe Robbie. 